Okay, in this reference video, we will go over law of sines, law of cosines, and solving triangles. So first, we want to go over the law of sines. I'm going to first go over the theorem. So for any triangle, the ratio of the sine of an angle to the length of the side opposite does not depend on which vertex of the triangle we use. That is using the notation from the triangle below. So let me explain it. So we can say that sine A, this angle right here, sine A, divided by opposite, opposite, this side right here. So sine angle, so this angle right here, divided by opposite, this side right here, A, is equal to sine B, so this angle right here, and the opposite. So this um, side right here is equal to sine C, so the angle divided by this C. So it's like a ratio. So this angle right here, sine angle, sine angle, divided by this actual side, which is opposite of the angle, is equal to, let's say, this angle right here, sine B, divided by this side right here. And the next one is the law of cosines. The theorem, if A comma B comma C are the length of the sides of any triangle, and C is the angle opposite of the side of the length C, equivalently, capital C is the angle included by the sides with length A and B, we have this. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. The capital letter represents the angle. This is just a reference video, so when we actually solve problems in the next video, it might make more sense. Next, we have solving triangles. So given some information about a triangle, we would like to solve for the length of all sides and all the angles. So the theorem, a triangle is uniquely determined if we know one of the following. So we can solve a triangle if we know side, 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 all three sides. So we know this side, this side, this side. So we use law of cosines to get the angle. We'll use this to get the angle. Then we'll use law of sines or cosines for the remaining info. So this essentially means we're given this B, we're given this A, and we're given this lowercase c. We're given all the sides. That means if we use the law of cosines, we would be able to get one of these angles. And the next thing, once we know one of these angles, we can use law of sines. Once again, we'll solve an actual problem, which might make more sense. Next is side, angle, side. Two sides and the angle included between them. It has to be a side, an angle, and a side. So if we're given side, angle, side, we would use a law of cosines to find the third side. We would be, we'd get one of these. And then we would use law of sines to get the uh, remaining angles. Next one, ASA, angle, side, angle. So we could be given this angle, this side, and this angle. So two angles and the third side between the angles. So since we know two angles and we know a triangle is 180 degrees, we would be able to get the third angle. And once we get the third angle, we can use law of sines to get the remaining information. Last one, side, angle, angle. Two angles and the side opposite one of the angles. And for this, we would, we would first find the third angle, since we have two angles, we get the third one because 180 minus the two angles would give us the last angle, then we would use the law of sines. And this is a side note, triangles, all angles add up to 180 degrees. So all A, this capital A, capital C, capital B would add up to 180 degrees. And the other thing to note is that the largest angle is opposite the largest side. So if C is our largest angle, let's say C is 120 degrees, then this lowercase c would be bigger than A and B. Also, if the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, so if this is like 5 degrees, this would be very small. And so in the next video, we will actually solve problems.